It's Wednesday, February 2nd, and the time for your world is today in the news update. Tourism occupancy is improving, but it is not back to 2019 levels. That's according to Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Rudy Grant. He revealed that there was a 20% increase in December 2021 when occupancy rose to 65.8% over the same period in 2020. However, he said it remained a nearly 10% short of the 75.7% recorded in December 2019, months before the COVID-19 pandemic struck. Our research and member feedback indicate that the 2021-2022 winter season is promising, and in this regard, we continue to be cautiously optimistic. However, the COVID-19 environment continues to be fluid, which means that the tourism landscape can be negatively impacted with little warning. In December 2021, occupancy was estimated at 65.8% in comparison to 45.1% in 2020 and 75.7% in 2019. This highlights that while occupancy is improving, it is not back to the 2019 levels. The projection is for a reasonably well-performing winter with occupancies for the months of January, February, March and April 2022 projected at 66%, 62%, 65% and 45% respectively. As we assess our tourism performance, it is important to highlight that although tourism business is returning, the total hotel revenues received in 2021 are approximately 43% of the 2019 revenues. Brandt said the critical performance marker of revenue per available room is approximately 46% of what it was in 2019, which is a clear signal that the road to recovery for the tourism industry may still be two or three years away. He also revealed that the PHTA will approach government with regards to some of the country's travel protocols. The PHTA believes that as we encourage and welcome visitors to Barbados, we must ensure that the visitor experience is exceptional. One of the persistent sources of concern continues to be the airport experience. Against this background, we will shortly be recommending to the government of Barbados through the Ministry of Tourism and International Transport changes to the Barbados travel protocols in a manner that maintains our competitiveness while ensuring that health and safety are not compromised. The Barbados tourism industry is on the rebound, but it is still faced with many challenges and great uncertainty. The industry recovery must be assessed in a holistic manner that takes account of all the variables in this dynamic environment. The Caribbean Development Bank has mobilized over 80 million U.S. dollars specifically to help its borrowing member countries meet the increased and changing needs brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. That's according to the CDB's Director of Projects Department, Daniel Best. He made the disclosure during the bank's annual news conference on Tuesday. Second year of the pandemic saw our response underpinned by flexibility and dexterity. Wherever possible, we worked with our BMCs to redesign operations to meet short-term needs and forged partnerships to leverage additional resources to fund national responses. These partnerships included collaboration with CARICOM, the University of West Indies, the IDB, PAHO, the European Union, the UK CIF, to name but a few. Key response and mitigation initiatives included a U.S. $50 million collaboration with IDB for health, education, social protection, MSME support, and recovery initiatives in the OECS. Projects have been approved in Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. A partnership with the European Investment Bank to provide Euro 30 million to BMCs for health-related emergency expenditure, including the purchase of vaccines and efforts to limit the spread of the virus. President of the National Union of Public Workers, Kimberly Agard, believes that the appointment of a general secretary will bring some stability to the organization. A comment comes after Richard Green beat out a veteran trade unionist, Ruin Waldron, for the post following a meeting of the union's National Council on Monday. 
Waldron has been appointed as of a new Deputy General Secretary. Egard said a Green's appointment was done via a transparent process and was a sign of stability. When contacted for reaction on his appointment, Green declined to give a comment at this time, saying he was first engaging with stakeholders before giving any statements. Waldron, meanwhile, said he fully accepted the decision made by the National Council. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To news from the region and now, law enforcement and aviation officials in Guyana are probing the discovery of an aircraft bearing a Venezuelan registration number which was reportedly abandoned at an illegal airstrip. News Source Guyana has a that report. An abandoned Venezuelan registered aircraft was found over the weekend in Guyana at an illegal airstrip in Caraduni, about 20 kilometers from the Carapacari crossing in Region 8. An investigation into the discovery of the illegal aircraft and the illegal airstrip has been launched by the Ministry of Home Affairs, the Guyana Police Force and the Guyana Defense Force. In a statement, the Ministry of Home Affairs said the aircraft carries the Venezuelan registration number YV-506. It was explained that on Saturday, police ranks in Mabura acted on information and discovered the Cessna 310 model aircraft in the bushes covered with branches and the tarpaulin. The statement said the propeller of the aircraft was removed and placed under the aircraft. According to the Ministry of Home Affairs, it is suspected that the aircraft is without key documentation, which will make it difficult to track the airframe, engine, and propeller time. A search was conducted in and around the aircraft, but no illegal substance was found in either the cabin or cargo space. Nothing was found in the immediate vicinity either. According to an early assessment by the lead engineer, the damage to the aircraft is extensive and beyond repair. However, further assessment will be conducted by the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority. And finally, on the international front, the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Teros Gabriesos, has warned that it is too early for countries to either declare victory over COVID-19 or give up attempts to halt transmission. More from Reuters TV. The World Health Organization on Tuesday cautioned countries eager to lift coronavirus precautions, saying Omicron hasn't yet peaked in many countries. It's premature for any country either to surrender or to declare victory. This virus is dangerous and it continues to evolve before our, our very eyes. WHO is currently tracking four sublineages of the Omicron variant of concern, including BA.2. The emerging BA2 form of the Omicron coronavirus variant does not seem to be any more severe than the original BA1 form, a World Health Organization official said on Tuesday. There's no indication that there's a change in severity. Um, again, uh, Omicron overall we know is more transmissible. It has more growth advantage and it causes less severe disease compared to Delta, but it's still a very dangerous virus. The comments come as the BA2 version of Omicron begins to replace the more common original BA1 version in countries such as Denmark. These two main lineages of Omicron differ from each other by more than 40 point mutations. BA2 was first identified in South Africa in early December. 
BA2 is more transmissible than the more common BA1 and more able to infect vaccinated people, according to a Danish study that analyzed infections in more than 8,500 Danish households between December and January. We need people to be aware that this virus is continuing to circulate and it's continuing to evolve. WHO officials said vaccines, masking and social distancing are still effective tools to fight the virus. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.